Hey everyone, it's Jennifer Fields coming to you today. I'm so excited to chat with you a little bit today. The group I'm with online, we do online marketing and mindset coaching. And um, every morning, Monday through Friday, we do a daily mindset call that's led by one of my coaches. And it kind of just gets us pumped and, and in the right frame of mind, getting our positive mindset and our success and, and abundance way of thinking going for the day as we approach our day with our home-based businesses. And I was excited because today we started reading the book Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. And it's actually the mindset is called or sorry, the mindset call is called Think and Grow Rich, although we do kind of refer to other books as well, but the team is just starting over with the Think and Grow Rich book, which is great because I just purchased it a little while ago and, and I've been reading it here and there but um, I haven't I keep kind of starting over <laughs> so now that the, the team is is reading this book together every day I'm really excited so I'm really gonna you know stick with it and get through every chapter and and be able to mastermind with my online colleagues about what they're thinking as well um, so I just wanted to read a little bit too about the book and and I was thinking I don't really like reading straight from the book during my videos but today I'll make a little exception. I want to read part of the author's preface, Napoleon Hill, um, when he wrote the book in 1937, I believe, is when it was first published. So this is part of the preface. Preface for Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. In every chapter of this book, mention has been made of the money-making secret which has made fortunes for more than 500 exceedingly wealthy men whom I have carefully analyzed over a period of years. The secret was brought to my attention by Andrew Carnegie more than a quarter century ago. The canny, lovable old Scotsman carelessly tossed it into my mind when I was but a boy. Then he sat back in his chair with a merry twinkle in his eye and watched carefully to see if I had brains enough to understand the full significance of what he had said to me. When he saw that I had grasped the idea, he asked if I would be willing to spend 20 years or more preparing myself to take it to the world, to men and women who, without the secret, might go through life as failures. I said I would, and with Mr. Carnegie's cooperation, I have kept my promise. This book contains the secret after having been put to a practical test by thousands of people in every walk of life. It was Mr. Carnegie's idea that the magic formula, which he gave himself a stupendous fortune, which gave him a stupendous fortune, ought to be placed within reach of people who do not have time to investigate how men make money. And it was his hope that I might test and demonstrate the soundness of the formula through the experience of men and women in every calling. He believed the formula should be taught in all public schools and colleges and expressed the opinion that if it were properly taught, it would so revolutionize the entire educational system that the time spent in school could be reduced to less than half. His experience with Charles M. Schwab and the younger men of Mr. Schwab's type convinced Mr. Carnegie that much of that which is taught in schools is of no value whatsoever in connection with the business of learning or living and accumulating riches. He arrived at this decision because he had taken into his business one young man after another, many of them with but little schooling, and by coaching them in the use of this formula, developed in them rare leadership. Moreover, his coaching made fortunes for everyone of whom who followed his instructions. For every one of them who followed his instructions, excuse me. In the chapter on faith, you will read the astounding story of the organization of the giant United States Steel Corporation, as it was conceived and carried out by one of the young men through whom Mr. Carnegie proved that his formula will work for all who are ready for it. The single application of the secret by that young man, Charles M. Schwab, made him a huge fortune in both money and opportunity. Roughly speaking, this particular application of the formula was worth $600 million. These facts, and they are facts well known to almost everyone who knew Mr. Carnegie, give you a fair idea of what the reading of this book may bring to you, provided you know what it is that you want.
even before it had undergone 20 years of practical testing. The secret passed on to more than 100,000 men and women who have used it for their personal benefit, as Mr. Carnegie planned that they should. Some have made fortunes with it. Others have used it successfully in creating harmony in their homes. A clergyman used it so effectively that it brought him an income of upwards of $75,000 a year. Arthur Nash, a Cincinnati tailor, used his near bankrupt business as a guinea pig on which to test this formula. The business came to life and made a fortune for its owners. It is still thriving, although Mr. Nash has gone. The experiment was so unique, experience was so un experiment was so unique that newspapers and magazines gave it more than a million dollars worth of laudatory publicity. The secret was passed on to Stuart Austin Weir of Dallas, Texas. He was ready for it. So ready that he gave up his profession and studied law. Did he succeed? That story is told too. I gave the secret to Jennings Randolph the day he graduated from college, and he has used it to successfully so successfully that he is now serving his third term as a member of Congress with an excellent opportunity to keep on using it until he carries himself to the White House. While serving as advertising manager of the LaSalle Extension University, when it was a little more than a name, I had the privilege of seeing J.G. Chaplin, president of the university, use this formula so effectively that he has since made the LaSalle one of the great extension schools of the country. The secret to which I refer has been mentioned no fewer than a hundred times throughout this book. It has not been directly named, for it seems to work more successfully when it is merely uncovered and left in sight where those who are ready and searching for it may pick it up. That is why Mr. Carnegie tossed it to me so quietly without giving me its specific name. If you are ready to put it to use, you will recognize this secret at least once in every chapter. I wish I might feel privileged to tell you how you will know if you are ready, but that would deprive you of much of the benefit you will receive when you make the discovery in your own way. And that's not the full preface, but I think I'll stop there. So needless to say, I am excited to dive into this book and I'll be doing videos daily on it, on you know just, just quick overviews of the chapters we're reading and what we're uncovering and maybe maybe I'll uh, let you know what I think the secret is as I go along and through the chapters and what's kind of standing out to me so I hope you follow along on this channel and hope to see you tomorrow thanks so much for watching if you'd like more information on the group that I'm with you can go ahead and click the link below thanks again for watching